All right, before we get into the contents of my day pack and how it might be used, let me set the table and we'll talk about what we're doing and a couple of things you might want to do before you get out here. So I live uh, in eastern Tennessee, bordering a whole bunch of uh, forest land and mountains. Love it. And it's not unusual for me to come out here by myself and hike some trails that I've never been on before. And some of them aren't even like frequented hiking trails. Sometimes I'll even go off trail. So, um, if you're like me and you do that kind of thing, or even if you stay on trail and, you know, you do everything as safely as possible, um, here's a couple of steps you might want to take before you head out. Um, the first thing I do is, ooh, catch my breath. That's what I do. <laughs> I notify somebody of my itinerary. So, uh, in today's case, I told my wife where I was hiking. So she knows where I'm gonna be. And if I don't show back up, um, she, she's gonna be able to send help directly to where I might be located. Um, second thing is you want to take a look at the weather. This stuff might seem obvious, but um, and I'm not just talking about the forecast for the time frame that you're going to be hiking on the trail uh, for your day hike. I'm talking about what's projected for that night, the next day, the next night. And generally what I'll do when I'm packing is, you know, I'm going to wear appropriate clothing for the hike. But inside my backpack, I'm going to pack the clothes that I think I would need to survive should something go wrong and I end up spending the night on the trail. And that could be anything from as simple of a twisted ankle to getting lost. There's all kinds of reasons why you might end up overnighting. So you want to have enough clothes in your day pack that you could survive the night. And I'm not talking about being comfortable. I'm talking about you're coming out the other side with all your fingers and toes. So, yeah, you know, everything is uh, recoverable. So those are the clothes that I'm going to be packing. Um, and then lastly, what was my last point? Oh, yeah. Uh, Google Maps, right? So that's free. Google Maps is free. Um, get on Google Maps before you get out into the woods and um, download the area that you're going to be hiking in. And, you know, preferably a larger area than um, the area that you're going to be hiking in. And that way there, that map, along with your GPS position on that map, is going to be available to you while you're out on the trail. And uh, there's some tutorials on, on YouTube on how to download uh, Google Maps. If you just get out in the woods and you didn't download the map before you got there, um, Google Maps is going to show your position, but it's going to be in a big field of gray, so you're not going to know anything around you or nothing. So you want to download the map, and then when you get out of your car, that's really the most critical time uh, for your hike. When you set out, just take a minute. Uh, don't just load up and run off in the woods, because that's when you're going to forget stuff. Um, so... Drop a pin where your car is uh, on your Google map. Open your map up, drop the pin, and then set out. And then um, you'll be able to find your way back to your car. Um, there's a lot of people out there that do these videos, and they're going to tell you, oh, you should bring a paper map and a compass. Well, they're full of crap. Um, they say that because it makes them feel safe and... Um, it's kind of like, well, I told you, you know, but here's the deal. Unless you've taken um, backwoods navigation courses or you really know your way around a map and a compass, um, if you get lost out here in the woods and you think you're going to pull out a paper map and a compass and navigate your way back to your car, uh, it's a little trickier than you might think. Uh, just First of all, just being able to look at the topography around you, you're going to have to get up on elevation means you got to hike to the top of a mountain. You have to be able to look around you at the terrain and then look at your map 
and be able to identify what you're looking at on the map correlating to where, you know, it, it, it's a whole bag of worms. So uh, my advice is uh, unless you've had some uh, map and compass training, that's probably not going to help you. And you're, you're way better off with um, Google Maps and uh, maybe a uh, Garmin GPS system, something like that. But anyway, that's the opener. It's kind of long-winded, but next thing we're going to get into is the contents of my pack. I got an almost view, like a partially obstructed mountain view. Then I'm recording on my phone right now, which is also my mapping system. Like we said, it functions as a completely off-grid GPS system. And it's also my flashlight, and it's a phone, and it's a camera. So, love that kind of utility. One piece of gear that does several things. But man, what a beautiful day. All right, let's get into the contents of the pack. So, the pack itself, um, I got this just for day hiking at Walmart, and it was uh, 15 bucks. Uh, it's a very small day pack. Um, it's plenty enough for me though, so let's get into the contents. In the main pouch is where I'm going to keep my um, clothes. So in here, for today's trip, I'm bringing, uh, I got a pair of gloves, I got a wool um, beanie cap, and I got my Enlightened Equipment Apex Torrid Puffy Jacket. Um, I think the temperatures tonight are projected to go down into the, um, to the high 30s, so that's it. That's all I got in there. And that's all that's in this main compartment. Um, it has two side pouches. And I have a water bottle in each side pouch. Um, and I happen to pick up... Uh, I always do this whenever I'm hiking. Uh, I look for natural tinder. So I spotted a piece of uh, fat wood. I picked that up, just threw it in my backpack. It's just something comforting about having um, some fire making tinder in my pack. But um, yeah, a water bottle on each side. And for the water bottles, I make sure that they are compatible with my um, water filtration system, which is inside of this platypus bag, I have my Sawyer water filter. So, there's some water bottles that are not compatible with the Sawyer. Um, I want one that is so that I can go to a stream, fill this water bottle up, screw my Sawyer on top of it, and drink pure water and not come down with some kind of uh, backcountry Giardia or whatever. I'm going to be healthy and be able to resupply my water on the trail. So that's water. So total, I got probably, um, with the platypus bag, maybe two and a half liters worth of water. I apologize for my dog panting right next to the phone. <laughs> so anyway, get down, Lizzie, down, get down. All right, so that's water. I keep a small Opinel 12. Um, saw inside of there so that uh, it'll help me process firewood. That's actually what I used to gather that piece of uh, fatwood here. I sawed that off. Um, a few granola bars, something to eat while I'm out and about. I have a uh, more Keneve. This is a um, Companion HD, so it's the heavy duty Companion. Um, I did a whole knife video, you check out my knife video and it'll talk more about this. But this is my field knife. Carry some uh, toilet paper pills. So these are actually uh, dehydrated toilet paper, you add a little water to it and it ends up with a, uh, a wet wipe. And I just do that because carrying a roll of toilet paper is pretty bulky. And I wanted something smaller. Uh, what else? I have um, 
couple of emergency ponchos. Ferrocerium rod and a lighter. And the last thing in there is a small tarp and a line and stake kit. So that's everything I bring. Um, video over. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, what I'll do now is uh, I'll try to set up a small camp using this stuff uh, to give you an idea of what the finished product looks like if I had to spend the night out here. This trail is super steep. Probably not showing up on video, so I guess the best way to capture it would be like this. So my phone is level right now, and that is the grade. Yeah. All right, I got a set up here, and uh, we'll go over that real quick. Ideally, you're not going to be on a ridge line, and you're not going to be like down in a gully. Uh, the ridge, you're going you're gonna to experience colder temperatures and higher winds. And in the gully, you're going to get um, colder air because cold air sinks. So you want to be somewhere in the middle, um, preferably on some flat ground. And in this case, I got a, a natural um, windbreak and also heat reflector with this giant down tree. And I set up right in front of that. So I got a, uh, a warming fire going and... The shelter itself. I'll put a link to uh, to this tarp down below, but it's basically like a uh, I don't know five foot by seven and a half foot uh, twenty five dollar tarp. And I I rigged the corners with guy lines. I didn't even use them for this layout here. And I had a separate bag with my um, ridge line, my pre rigged ridge line, and four tent stakes. And I used uh, I used all four tent stakes and the ridge line. But um, if you're interested in tarp setups, there's a million ways to do it. Um, so check out YouTube uh, for some help with that. But this tarp right here, uh, just enough room to sit in and sit up underneath it. But it's going to give me good uh, coverage from the wind. Uh, that's something to be mindful when you set up. Make sure that you're um, sheltered from the wind. And it's going to be uh, big enough that I could lay down. If I need it to, now you can see there's a lot of um, a lot of leaves on the ground here. Ideally, in like in a in a tough situation like we're talking about, I would probably sweep all those leaves up and stuff them underneath that shelter to give me some uh, give me some insulation from the ground. Um, as it stands, that day pack I have um, has a pad in it that goes up against your back, so I could sit on that, and that would keep me. Uh, from losing heat through conduction. I'll give you a walk around here. Check it out. Um, obviously I picked an area where um, there's a lot of deadfall. You can see that I am gonna have plenty of firewood to get me through the night. Here's what the back of it looks like. Nothing special. But definitely going to give me um, coverage from the wind. And I'm going to get some uh, warmth, reflective warmth off the tree and everything from that fire. So um, I guess the only thing uh, missing in my kit is one of those... Uh, reflective survival blankets and uh, I probably should get one of those and throw it in there um, and of course the poncho I would open up and spread out as a ground sheet um, under the bottom of uh, the, the under the tarp to keep my butt dry my body dry if I lay down um, I didn't do it in this case because those those ponchos are like genies and once you take them out of the bag you can never get them back in there they're kind of disposable that way so uh, you just have to use your imagination. The poncho would be laid out underneath. Um, of course, the poncho would be on top of all, all these wet leaves here to keep me dry. But the wet leaves would uh, provide some insulation from the cold, dark, the cold, dark ground. <laughs> 
and uh, that would get me through a night. So that is the content of my day pack and how it's utilized. So I have water, I have food, um, shelter, clothing, basically uh, everything I need to get through, uh, you know, 24 hours can de definitely be uncomfortable, but I'm going to stay alive. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. You guys have a good one.